Yo, what's up manifestors? Are you ready to get your minds blown and your lives transformed? We're diving into Neville Goddard's classic, Your Faith is Your Fortune. If you want to learn how to turn your wildest dreams into reality, stick around. I reread the book recently and you're not going to believe what I've learned and started applying in my life. And hey, don't forget to sign up for our free newsletter to snag your exclusive manifestation cheat sheets. Trust me, you don't want to miss this. Introduction to Neville Goddard and Your Faith is Your Fortune. What's up, fam? Welcome to the Neville Goddard Son of Abdullah channel. It's your boy Son of Abdullah, and today we're breaking down Neville Goddard's banger, Your Faith is Your Fortune. This book is the ultimate guide to flexing your manifestation muscles. Neville Goddard, aka the Og of Manifestation, taught that imagination creates reality. Yup, you heard that right. This dude was dropping knowledge way before it was cool. Your faith is your fortune, is all about how your beliefs shape your world. So, why is this book one of the goats? It's simple, Neville breaks it down so even your grandma could get it, well at least he tried to but we'll do the rest. He teaches us how to harness our faith to create the life we want. Spoiler alert, it's all in your head. We're gonna hit each chapter like a boss, giving you the lowdown on Neville's teachings and how to use them in your daily grind. Whether you're a newbie or a manifestation master, this series will level up your game. Before we jump in, smash that subscribe button, ring the bell for notifications, and if you're vibing with this content, give us a big thumbs up. Let's kick things off with chapter 1, Before Abraham Was. Chapter 1 Before Abraham Was. Alright, manifestors, let's dive into chapter 1, Before Abraham Was. Neville hits us with some serious wisdom right off the bat. John chapter 8 verse 58 says, Before Abraham was, I am. Translation. Your awareness existed before everything else. Neville breaks it down, in the beginning was the unconditioned awareness of being. It's like the ultimate blank canvas. By imagining itself to be something, it became that. Creation 101, folks. Picture this, before you can manifest anything, you got to think it, feel it, believe it. That's the real magic trick. By mastering this process, you're basically becoming a manifestation wizard. So, here's your homework, start flexing those, I am, muscles. Wake up, look in the mirror, and say, I am powerful, I am unstoppable, I am a manifesting beast. Feel it, believe it, live it. Next up, chapter 2, you shall decree. We'll dive into how your words are like magic spells. And don't forget to download our free manifestation cheat sheets by signing up for our newsletter. The link's in the description, baby. Chapter 2 You Shall Decree Chapter 2, You Shall Decree, is all about how your words are basically magic spells. Isaiah chapter 55 verse 11 says, So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth, it shall not return unto me void. Neville's dropping knowledge, your words are powerful because they express your beliefs. Whatever you decree with conviction will manifest in your world. It's like Hogwarts, but for real life. Here's a challenge. Start listening to your self-talk. Are you spitting positive bars or negative trash? Remember, your words shape your reality, so choose them wisely. To harness this power, start each day with positive decrees. Say, I am wealthy, I am healthy, I am living my best life. Feel the vibes, fam. Next up, Chapter 3. The principle of truth. We're gonna uncover how knowing the truth sets you free. And remember, sign up for our newsletter to get those manifestation cheat sheets. They're like your personal spellbook for manifesting magic. Chapter 3 The Principle of Truth. Yo, truth seekers. Chapter 3 The Principle of Truth is here to blow your mind. John chapter 8 verse 32 says, Ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Time to break those mental chains. Neville's truth bomb, the truth that sets you free is knowing that your consciousness is the resurrection and the life. Your awareness brings things to life. Basically, you're a magician, and your wand is your mind. Picture this, if you believe you're abundant, healthy, and happy, guess what? That's your reality. But if you're stuck on broke, sick, and sad, that's your reality too. The choice is yours. To apply this, start by kicking out those fake beliefs. Replace them with the truth. Say, I am free, I am powerful, I am creating my best life. Meditate on these truths and watch your world change. Up next, chapter 4, Whom Seek Ye? 
we're gonna explore why you should stop looking outside and start looking within. And don't forget to grab your free manifestation cheat sheets by signing up for our newsletter. They're packed with power-ups for your manifestation game. Chapter 4 Whom Seek Ye What's good, seekers? Chapter 4 Whom Seek Ye is about to drop some serious wisdom. John chapter 18 verse 6 says, As soon then as he had said unto them, I am they went backward and fell to the ground. Translation, look within, people. Neville's gem, stop chasing external gurus and start tapping into your inner guru. It's fine to have teachers and mentors but remember, your consciousness is the real master. Everything you need is already inside you. Think of it like this, you're searching for your phone while you're holding it in your hand. That's how silly it is to look outside for answers. Spoiler alert, you've had the power all along, Dorothy. To practice this, take a moment each day to connect with your inner self. Ask, whom do I seek, and listen. You'll find that you already have the wisdom to manifest your desires. Next, we're diving into chapter 5, Who Am I? Time to uncover your true identity. Chapter 5 Who Am I? Chapter 5, Who Am I? is here to blow your mind. Matthew chapter 16 verse 15 asks, But whom say ye that I am? Neville teaches that knowing your true self is the key to everything. Your true self isn't your job title, your Instagram followers, or your bank account. It's your consciousness, your awareness of being. When you get this, you unlock limitless potential. Think of your consciousness as the root of a tree. If the root is healthy, the tree flourishes. If it's weak, the tree withers. Same goes for your life. Nurture your awareness, and your life will thrive. To practice this, affirm your true identity daily. Say, I am the creator of my reality, I am limitless, and I am powerful. Feel it, believe it, and live it. Next, we're diving into chapter 6, I am he. This chapter is gonna make you see yourself in a whole new light. And don't forget to download your free manifestation cheat sheets by signing up for our newsletter. They're packed with affirmations to help you embrace your true identity. Chapter 6 I am he. Chapter 6, I am he, is here to light up your life. John chapter 8 verse 24 says, For if ye believe not that I am, ye shall die in your sins. Neville's teaching is all about embracing the I am consciousness. Neville's wisdom, your awareness of being is the source of all creation. When you say, I am, you're declaring your divine nature and creative power. This simple statement is your key to unlocking potential. Picture this, if you're always saying, I am tired, I am broke, I am stressed, that's what you get. Flip the script. Start saying, I am energized, I am wealthy, I am living my best life. To practice this, start using, I am, statements every day. Say, I am healthy, I am successful, I am unstoppable. Feel it in your bones and watch your life transform. Next up, Chapter 7, Thy Will Be Done. We're gonna talk about aligning your desires with the divine will. And remember, sign up for our free newsletter to get those manifestation cheat sheets. They're designed to help you harness the power of I am and manifest your dreams. Chapter 7, Thy Will Be Done. What's up, divine creators? Chapter 7, Thy Will Be Done, is all about aligning your desires with the divine will. Luke chapter 22 verse 42 says, not my will, but thine, be done. Neville teaches that surrendering to the divine will is the key to manifesting your highest good. This isn't about giving up on your dreams. It's about recognizing that your true desires are aligned with the divine plan. When you surrender your limited will, you open up to infinite possibilities. Think of it like this, if you're constantly fighting the steering wheel, you're gonna have a bumpy ride. But if you trust the car and the road, you'll have a smooth journey. Same goes for life, align with the divine will and flow with ease. To practice this, start by affirming, I surrender to the divine will, I trust the process, and, I am open to infinite possibilities. Release the need to control everything and trust that it's all working out for your highest good. Next, we're diving into chapter 8, No Other God. We're gonna explore the importance of focusing on your inner power. And don't forget to download your free manifestation cheat sheets by signing up for our newsletter. They're packed with exercises to help you align with the divine will and manifest your desires effortlessly. Chapter 8 No Other God Hey, powerhouses! Chapter 8, No Other God, is all about focusing on your inner power. Isaiah chapter 44 verse 6 says, 
I am the first, and I am the last, and beside me is no God. Neville teaches that your awareness of being is the only true power. Many people look to external sources, money, status, or even other people, for their sense of power and security. But Neville reminds us that true power comes from within. Your consciousness is the source of all creation. Imagine trying to charge your phone with someone else's charger, it won't work because it's not connected to your power source. Similarly, relying on external sources for power disconnects you from your true creative potential. To harness this power, start by affirming, I am the source of my power, I am connected to infinite abundance, and, I am the creator of my reality. Focus on your inner strength and watch your outer world transform. Next up, we're diving into chapter 9, The Foundation Stone. We're gonna talk about building a solid foundation for your desires. And remember, sign up for our free newsletter to get those manifestation cheat sheets. They're packed with powerful affirmations and exercises to help you tap into your inner power. Chapter 9 The Foundation Stone Chapter 9, The Foundation Stone, is all about building a solid foundation for your desires. 1 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 10 11 says, For other foundations can no man lay that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Neville teaches that the foundation of all manifestation is your consciousness. What you are aware of being becomes your reality. To manifest your desires, you must build your consciousness on a solid foundation of positive beliefs and feelings. Think of your consciousness as the foundation of a house. If the foundation is weak, the house will collapse. But if the foundation is strong, the house will stand firm. Similarly, a strong foundation of positive beliefs ensures the manifestation of your desires. To build this foundation, start by affirming, I am strong, I am confident, and, I am capable. Visualize yourself standing on a solid foundation, feeling grounded and secure. This practice strengthens your consciousness and prepares you for manifestation. Next, we're diving into chapter 10, To Him That Hath. We're gonna talk about the importance of gratitude and abundance consciousness. Chapter 10, To Him That Hath. Chapter 10, To Him That Hath, is all about the importance of gratitude and abundance consciousness. Luke chapter 8 verse 18 says, For whosoever hath, to him shall be given, and whosoever hath not, from him shall be taken even that which he seemeth to have. Neville teaches that those who focus on abundance attract more abundance, while those who focus on lack attract more lack. Gratitude is a powerful tool for shifting your focus from scarcity to abundance. Imagine your consciousness as a magnet. Whatever you focus on, you attract more of. By practicing gratitude, you become a magnet for positive experiences and abundance. To practice this, start a daily gratitude journal. Each morning, write down three things you're grateful for. Affirm, I am grateful for all the blessings in my life, I am abundant, and, I am open to receiving more. Next up, we're diving into chapter 11, Christmas. We're gonna explore the symbolism of Christmas and its connection to manifestation. Chapter 11 Christmas. Chapter 11, Christmas, explores the symbolism of Christmas and its connection to manifestation. Neville teaches that Christmas is not just a holiday, but a profound symbol of the birth of our desires. Christmas represents the birth of the Christ consciousness within us, the realization that we are the creators of our reality. Just as Jesus was born in a humble manger, our desires often begin as humble ideas that grow into powerful manifestations. Think of your desires as seeds planted in the fertile soil of your consciousness. With faith and nurturing, these seeds grow and manifest into your reality. Christmas is a reminder to celebrate the birth of our desires and to nurture them with love and faith. To connect with this symbolism, spend time each day visualizing your desires as already fulfilled. Affirm, I am the creator of my reality, I am birthing my desires, and, I am celebrating my manifestations. Next up, we're diving into chapter 12, Crucifixion and Resurrection. We're gonna talk about releasing old beliefs and embracing new ones. Chapter 12 Crucifixion and Resurrection Chapter 12, Crucifixion and Resurrection, is all about releasing old beliefs and embracing new ones. Neville teaches that this process is essential for manifesting your desires. The crucifixion symbolizes the death of your old, limiting beliefs. Just as Jesus was crucified and resurrected, you must let go of your limiting beliefs to rise into a new state of consciousness. This resurrection is the birth of your new, empowered self. Think of it as spring cleaning for your mind. You can't bring in new furniture without getting rid of the old, broken pieces. Similarly, to manifest new desires, you must release old, 
limiting beliefs that no longer serve you. To practice this, identify a limiting belief you want to release. Write it down and then write a new, empowering belief to replace it. Affirm, I release all limiting beliefs, I am resurrected into a new state of consciousness, and I embrace my true power. Next up, we're diving into chapter 13, the I impressions. We're gonna explore the power of impressions and how they shape your reality. Chapter 13, the I impressions. What's good, impressionists? Chapter 13, The Impressions, is all about the power of impressions and how they shape your reality. Neville teaches that your consciousness is like a canvas, and your impressions are the paint that creates your world. Every thought, feeling, and belief leaves an impression on your consciousness. These impressions shape your reality, just as an artist's brushstrokes create a painting. By becoming aware of your impressions, you can consciously create the life you desire. Imagine your mind as a blank canvas. Each thought and feeling is a brushstroke that adds to the overall picture. By choosing positive, empowering thoughts, you create a beautiful masterpiece of your life. To practice this, start by paying attention to your thoughts and feelings throughout the day. When you notice a negative impression, replace it with a positive one. Affirm, I am the artist of my life, I choose positive impressions, and I create a beautiful reality. Next up, we're diving into chapter 14, Circumcision. We're gonna talk about the symbolism of circumcision and its connection to manifestation. Chapter 14 Circumcision Hey, Symbol Seekers Chapter 14, Circumcision, is all about the symbolism of circumcision and its connection to manifestation. Neville teaches that circumcision represents the cutting away of the old, limiting self to reveal your true, unlimited nature. Circumcision symbolizes the removal of false beliefs and limitations that block your true potential. By cutting away these limitations, you uncover your true, divine nature and align with your creative power. Think of it like pruning a tree. By cutting away the dead branches, you allow the tree to grow stronger and healthier. Similarly, by removing limiting beliefs, you allow your true potential to flourish. To practice this, identify a limiting belief you want to prune from your consciousness. Visualize cutting it away and affirm, I release all limitations, I am aligned with my true nature, and, I embrace my divine potential. Next up, we're diving into chapter 15, Interval of Time. We're gonna talk about the concept of time and its role in manifestation. Chapter 15 Interval of Time. Chapter 15, Interval of Time, is all about the concept of time and its role in manifestation. Neville teaches that there is always an interval between the conception of a desire and its manifestation. This interval of time is necessary for the natural growth and development of your desires. Just as a seed needs time to grow into a tree, your desires need time to manifest in the physical world. Patience and faith are essential during this interval. Think of it like baking a cake. You wouldn't take the cake out of the oven before it's fully baked, would you? Similarly, you must allow your desires the necessary time to come to fruition. To practice this, focus on maintaining faith and patience during the interval of time. Affirm, I trust the process, I am patient and faithful, and, my desires are manifesting in perfect timing. Next up, we're diving into chapter 16, the triune God. We're gonna talk about the triune nature of God and its connection to manifestation. And remember, sign up for our free newsletter to get those manifestation cheat sheets. They're packed with exercises to help you maintain faith and patience during the interval of time. Chapter 16, the triune God. Chapter 16, The Triune God, is all about the triune nature of God and its connection to manifestation. Neville teaches that the triune nature of God consists of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Father represents your consciousness, the source of all creation. The Son represents your desires, the manifestations of your consciousness. The Holy Spirit represents the action, the creative power that brings your desires to life. Think of it like a movie production. The Father is the director, the Son is the script, and the Holy Spirit is the crew that brings the script to life. Together, they create the movie of your reality. To practice this, affirm your connection to the triune nature of God. Say, I am the creator of my reality, my desires are divine, and, I trust in the creative power within me. Next up, we're diving into chapter 17, Prayer. We're gonna talk about the power of prayer and its role in manifestation. And remember, sign up for our free newsletter to get those manifestation cheat sheets. They're packed with exercises to help you connect with the triune nature of God and manifest your desires. Chapter 17 Prayer Chapter 17, 
prayer, is all about the power of prayer and its role in manifestation. Neville teaches that prayer is not about asking for things, but about feeling and affirming your desires is already fulfilled. Prayer is a powerful tool for aligning your consciousness with your desires. By feeling your desires is already fulfilled, you bring them into manifestation. This aligns with the biblical principle, ask, and it shall be given you. Think of prayer as placing an order at a restaurant. You don't beg the waiter for your food, you confidently place your order and trust that it will be delivered. Similarly, prayer is about confidently affirming your desires and trusting that they will manifest. To practice this, start by feeling your desires as already fulfilled. Affirm, I am grateful for my manifested desires, I trust in the power of prayer, and, I am a powerful creator. Next up, we're diving into chapter 18, The Twelve Disciples. We're gonna talk about the symbolism of the Twelve Disciples and their connection to manifestation. Chapter 18, The Twelve Disciples. Chapter 18, The Twelve Disciples, is all about the symbolism of the Twelve Disciples and their connection to manifestation. Neville teaches that the Twelve Disciples represent the Twelve Aspects of our consciousness. Each disciple symbolizes a different aspect of your consciousness, from faith and love to imagination and will. By understanding and aligning these aspects, you can harness your full creative power. Imagine your consciousness as a council of Twelve Wise Advisors. Each advisor represents a different strength, and together, they guide you in manifesting your desires. By balancing and harmonizing these aspects, you unlock your true potential. To practice this, meditate on each disciple and their symbolic meaning. Affirm, I am balanced and harmonious, I align with my inner strengths, and, I am a powerful creator. Next up, we're diving into chapter 19, Liquid Light. We're gonna talk about the concept of liquid light and its connection to manifestation. And remember, sign up for our free newsletter to get those manifestation cheat sheets. They're packed with exercises to help you align with the 12 aspects of consciousness and manifest your desires. Chapter 19 Liquid Light Chapter 19, Liquid Light, is all about the concept of liquid light and its connection to manifestation. Neville teaches that liquid light is the formless substance of the universe, the raw material of creation. This liquid light is shaped by your consciousness into the forms and experiences of your reality. By understanding and harnessing this substance, you can create anything you desire. Think of liquid light as clay in the hands of a sculptor. The sculptor shapes the clay into a beautiful statue, just as your consciousness shapes liquid light into the experiences of your life. To practice this, visualize liquid light flowing into your consciousness and shaping into your desired experiences. Affirm, I am a creator of light, I shape my reality with consciousness, and, I manifest my desires with ease. Next up, we're diving into chapter 20, The Breath of Life. We're gonna talk about the power of breath and its connection to manifestation. And remember, sign up for our free newsletter to get those manifestation cheat sheets. They're packed with exercises to help you harness the power of liquid light and create your desired reality. Chapter 20 The Breath of Life Hey, breathers of life. Chapter 20, The Breath of Life, is all about the power of breath and its connection to manifestation. Neville teaches that breath is the life force that animates your desires and brings them into reality. Breath is a powerful tool for aligning your consciousness with your desires. By focusing on your breath, you can center yourself, clear your mind, and connect with your creative power. Imagine your breath as a bridge between your consciousness and your desires. By breathing deeply and mindfully, you bring life and energy to your desires, helping them to manifest more easily. To practice this, spend a few minutes each day focusing on your breath. As you inhale, visualize your desires coming to life. As you exhale, release any doubts or fears. Affirm, I breathe life into my desires, I am connected to my creative power, and, I manifest with each breath. Next up, we're diving into chapter 21, Daniel in the lion's den. We're gonna talk about overcoming challenges and staying true to your desires. And remember, sign up for our free newsletter to get those manifestation cheat sheets. They're packed with exercises to help you harness the power of breath and manifest your desires. Chapter 21 Daniel in the Lion's Den What's up, fearless manifestors? Chapter 21, Daniel in the Lion's Den, is all about overcoming challenges and staying true to your desires. Neville teaches that, like Daniel, you must remain steadfast in your faith, even when facing seemingly insurmountable obstacles. Daniel's story is a powerful reminder that your faith can protect you and see you through any challenge. 
By holding firm to your desires and beliefs, you create a shield of divine protection around you. Think of challenges as tests of your faith. Just as Daniel's faith saved him from the lions, your faith can save you from the obstacles in your path. Stay focused on your desires and trust that you are divinely protected. To practice this, affirm your faith and protection daily. Say, I am divinely protected, I trust in my faith, and, I overcome all challenges. Visualize yourself standing strong and fearless, no matter what comes your way. Next up, we're diving into chapter 22, Fishing. We're gonna talk about the art of visualization and attracting your desires. And remember, sign up for our free newsletter to get those manifestation cheat sheets. They're packed with exercises to help you stay true to your desires and overcome challenges. Chapter 22 Fishing Chapter 22, Fishing, is all about the art of visualization and attracting your desires. Neville teaches that, like fishing, you must cast your line into the waters of your consciousness and reel in your desires with faith and patience. Visualization is a powerful tool for manifesting your desires. By clearly imagining your desired outcomes, you create a mental blueprint that guides your reality. It's like setting a GPS for your dreams. Think of it like fishing. You cast your line with a clear intention, patiently wait, and trust that the fish, your desires, will bite. Visualization is about seeing and feeling your desires as already fulfilled, reeling them in with faith. To practice this, spend time each day visualizing your desires. See yourself living your dream life, feel the emotions, and trust that it's on its way. Affirm, I am reeling in my desires, I visualize my dreams, and, I trust the process. Next up, we're diving into chapter 23, Be Ears That Hear. We're gonna talk about the importance of listening to your inner guidance. And remember, sign up for our free newsletter to get those manifestation cheat sheets. They're packed with visualization techniques to help you attract your desires. Chapter 23 Be Ears That Hear. Welcome back, listeners. Chapter 23, Be Ears That Hear, is all about the importance of listening to your inner guidance. Neville teaches that you must be receptive to the messages from your higher self and the universe. Your inner guidance is like a GPS for your soul. By tuning in and listening, you receive valuable insights and directions that help you manifest your desires. It's like having a personal life coach in your head. Think of it like this, if you're driving with the music blaring, you might miss important directions. Similarly, if you're too distracted by external noise, you might miss the guidance from within. Turn down the noise and listen. To practice this, spend time each day in quiet reflection. Listen to your inner voice and trust the messages you receive. Affirm, I am receptive to my inner guidance, I trust my intuition, and, I hear the voice of my higher self. Next up, we're diving into chapter 24, Clairvoyance. We're gonna talk about developing your intuitive vision. And remember, sign up for our free newsletter to get those manifestation cheat sheets. They're packed with exercises to help you listen to your inner guidance and manifest your desires. Chapter 24 Clairvoyance Hey, visionaries! Chapter 24, Clairvoyance, is all about developing your intuitive vision. Neville teaches that clairvoyance is the ability to see beyond the physical and perceive the reality of your desires. Clairvoyance is about seeing with your mind's eye. It's like having X-ray vision for your dreams. By developing this ability, you can see your desires is already fulfilled and align your actions with this vision. Imagine having a superpower that lets you see the future you want to create. That's what clairvoyance is all about. It's about tapping into your inner vision and using it to guide your manifestations. To practice this, spend time each day visualizing your desires with crystal clear clarity. See every detail, feel every emotion, and trust that your vision is real. Affirm, I am clairvoyant, I see my desires clearly, and, I trust my inner vision. Next up, we're diving into chapter 25, 23rd Psalm. That you shall not want for anything. Chapter 25, 23rd Psalm. Chapter 25, 23rd Psalm, is simply that your awareness is your Lord and Shepherd and shall lead you to your desires or whatever your focus on and that you shall not want for anything because you already have it. Next up is chapter 26, Gethsemane. Chapter 26 Gethsemane. Chapter 26, Gethsemane, is all about the power of surrender and acceptance. Neville teaches that, like Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane, you must surrender your will and accept the divine plan. Surrender is not about giving up, it's about letting go of resistance and trusting the flow of life. 
By accepting the divine plan, you open yourself to greater possibilities and align with your true path. Think of it like floating down a river. If you fight the current, you'll exhaust yourself. But if you surrender and go with the flow, you'll reach your destination effortlessly. Surrender is about trusting the journey. To practice this, affirm your trust and surrender each day. Say, I surrender to the divine plan, I trust the flow of life, and, I accept my path with grace. Let go of resistance and embrace the journey. Next up, we're diving into chapter 27, a formula for victory. We're gonna talk about the steps to achieving your goals. And remember, sign up for our free newsletter to get those manifestation cheat sheets. They're packed with exercises to help you surrender and trust the divine plan. Chapter 27 A Formula for Victory Chapter 27, A Formula for Victory, is all about the steps to achieving your goals. Neville teaches a simple yet powerful formula. Assume the feeling of the wish fulfilled and act upon it with faith. This formula is your blueprint for success. By assuming the feeling of your desired outcome and acting as if it's already achieved, you align your consciousness with your goals and bring them into reality. Think of it like preparing for a role in a movie. You embody the character and live as they do. Similarly, to achieve your goals, you must embody the person who has already achieved them. To practice this, spend time each day assuming the feeling of your wish fulfilled. Act with confidence and faith, knowing that your goals are already yours. Affirm, I am victorious, I assume my desires is fulfilled, and, I act with faith and confidence. Thank you for joining us on this epic journey through Neville Goddard's, your faith is your fortune. We hope you found these insights and practices valuable. Remember, to get the most out of these teachings, get our free manifestation cheat sheets by signing up for our newsletter, we will send them to you this week when the newsletter goes out. They're packed with powerful exercises to help you manifest your desires and create your dream life. We hope this deep dive into, your faith is your fortune, has inspired and empowered you. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and subscribe to our channel. Until next time, keep believing, keep creating, and remember, your faith is your fortune.